It has stood the test of time. God's book, the Bible, still relevant in today's complex world. It is written, sharing messages of hope around the world. Welcome again and thank you for joining us on It Is Written Canada. I'm holding this stool here because we have been talking about the three legs of a stool. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about the ingredients or the building blocks for Christianity. And that first leg of the stool that we've been talking about, and we are here with Lee Venn, and he's been teaching us that that first leg is Bible study for the purpose of connecting with God and having a real relationship mm -hmm. with Him. And the second one we talked about last time, which was um, connecting with God through prayer, and not just a one-way communication, but a two-way communication. Now this, this stool is not gonna stand up on two legs, and so it's it needs time. that. We can try it, sure. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna fall over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't wanna make a big noise here. <laughs> so that third leg of the stool, which I'm gonna put on there, and you can see, is sharing. So sharing what God has given to us, and when we, um, share that message that God has put into our hearts through His Word and through connecting with Him and talking with Him, then we can stand and then we have a solid connection with Him. Without that, we do not experience joy. Actually, there is joy in service. And so God does not expect us to keep that to ourselves, does He, Lee? No, no. In fact, it puts me in mind of Matthew 25, where there's a story Jesus tells about these three stewards that are given talents to work with. Right. And then the master goes off on a trip. And when he comes back, one of the stewards has just buried the talent and done nothing with it. And he returns it. Mm -hmm. The other two had doubled it and they gave it back to the master. And the line that Jesus uses as each of those two faithful stewards mm -hmm. return their talents doubled, the line Jesus uses is, well done. And then he says, I'm going to give you another job to do. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then he tells the other guy, out of here. Yeah. And the guy ends up losing out on the joy of the Lord. In fact, they take the talent from him that he had, let, you know, he had done nothing yeah. with, and they give right. it to one of the other guys. Mm -hmm. But the concept was he gives them more work to do yes. and calls it joy. joy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So either you use it, or you lose it. That's a, uh, yeah, or it fits perfectly. Yeah. yeah. So I know you have had experiences with people who you have had the opportunity to guide and lead them to the Lord. Can you think of one that really um, speaks to this, you know, someone who, is, who has had that connection with Jesus through his word, um, through prayer, and then his greatest joy was in service? The joy of the Lord concept. That would have to, the first one that comes to my mind is my friend Steve Mackey. Uh, Steve Mackey, when I first met him, Steve Mackey had just taken the world heavyweight title in kickboxing or shoot boxing. He'd taken it in Tokyo, Japan, in the Tokyo Dome on international satellite television. Mm, yeah. I remember him. You do? Yes, yeah. I do. I, I, I saw well, him uh, on the uh, internet. He's, he's yeah. been around yeah. a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was back in the 90s okay. yeah, when yeah. I first met him. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, he was like the baddest of the bad, as mm -hmm. they would say. Uh, I didn't know anything about kickboxing or shootboxing, but it's a form of martial arts yes. that is the most, it's considered the most dangerous, most lethal form of organized refereed sport fighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's not something I'd glorify, but I'm just mentioning that that's what Steve came out of. Mm -hmm. And I happened to meet him in Kansas City, which was his hometown, mm -hmm. and I was pastoring there, and someone introduced us, and he said, what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I try to help people get to become better friends of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he said, get out of here. You can't be friends of Jesus. He's keeping the universe running, and he's invisible and all that. You know, you don't have time for that. I said, oh, no, he's dying to be friends. <laughs> he goes, how, how do you get to be friends with him? And I, so I told him about the three legs of the stool. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? If you would open up a Bible to one of the Gospels, like the Gospel of John, yeah. Say a prayer that you want to meet him there and mm -hmm. that you want your heart touched and stirred, that you want him to take you into a deep experience that's real and tangible. I said, he'll do it. Mm -hmm. And Steve Mackey said, I'll go get a Bible. I'll buy a Bible and I'll try that. And I said, go for it. Well, that just became the beginning of interactions that I had with Steve. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I just probably, it's not meant to be name dropping, but it'll probably sound like it's name dropping. But Steve was a mover and a shaker at that time. Mm -hmm. I mean. 
he was personal friends of Chuck Norris, Sylvester Stallone, wow. a guy named Mr. T. Chuck Norris actually involved, and, 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 and Sylvester Stallone actually in, involved Steve in um, choreographing fight scenes in the movies, the Rocky series that, that Sylvester Stallone put together. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he had this reputation. Oh, and then incidentally, just about three years ago, Steve was inducted into the Martial Arts Hall of, Hall of Fame, and mm -hmm. Chuck Norris was the one that uh, gave him the honors and so on. Wow. So, you know, he had that reputation. Mm -hmm. Well, he started reading the Gospel of John, mm -hmm. and Jesus said, if I am lifted up, yeah. I'll draw you to myself. And oh man, amazing things began happening. And Steve, uh, sort of a long story shortened there, Steve actually became a member of our congregation. Mm -hmm. He became the leader of our youth department. They thought, how cool is this to have Steve Mackey be our youth director? And if Steve needed their attention, he'd tell them in the Bible, it talks about the laying on of hands. <laughs> and they would pay attention. Uh, but such cool things began happening in Steve's life mm -hmm. that uh, he had story after story to tell about God transforming him. In fact, I saw him interviewed on national sports, nationally syndicated sports television after the fight and one of, after he'd become a Christian. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the interviewer said mm -hmm. was, so Mr. Mackey, when and where are you going to defend the world heavyweight title? Because obviously the title was meant to be challenged. Mm -hmm. And Steve said, I won't be defending it. He said, I've become friends with the Lord Jesus Christ and he's taken the fight out of me. Wow. And then he said, I work for my boss now. And he <laughs> went like that on nationally syndicated sport television. I thought, wow. how cool is that? That is cool. That's well, there was a woman named um, Jeanette Johnson. She was writing a book called Paint Your World of Love. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to include some of the stories of what God had been doing in the life of this kickboxer. So mm -hmm. she asked Steve if she could. And Steve said, if you think it'd be of any value to anybody, you're welcome to use my story mm -hmm. and what Jesus has done. So she did the book, published it. People began reading the story and thinking, wow, how cool what God's doing. And then Steve started getting invitations to go places and tell people what God was doing in his life. Yes. Mm -hmm. So years go by and we move off to uh, the West Coast. And we're living near Seattle, Washington. Mm -hmm. And I find out that a public high school in Bellingham, Washington, which is right at the north end of the I-5 mm -hmm. corridor out there in the West Coast, mm -hmm. asked Steve to come and tell in a public high school on a Saturday night tell what had been going on in his life. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, that's something. Mm -hmm. And I said, Steve, that's just a couple hour drive from where I am. So I will come up and Margie and I will take you to the airport on Sunday because you're going to have to fly home again. That will give us a chance to spend some time mm -hmm. together. So I drove up and got there in the evening on Saturday. It was a Saturday thing. And uh, the parking lot was jam-packed and the auditorium was completely filled because Steve was well known. Mm -hmm. And so I went around looking for him before it started mm -hmm. just to say hi. And he mm -hmm. was crying hmm. over in a corner by himself. And I said, man, are you okay? He said, oh yeah, I'm okay. He said, I was just praying. I was asking that when this meeting is over and people go home, mm -hmm. instead of thinking about Steve Mackey, the kickboxer, they're thinking only about the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the best friend you could ever have. Yeah. Wow. He said, I want that so badly, I'm just in tears praying for it. Mm. I said, I think that he's gonna honor that request, Steve. Mm. Anyway, long story shortened, um, God did honor that request. And when it was over, a bunch of people came forward and wanted to shake his hand, talk with him, ask mm -hmm. him questions. But there was a little guy about nine or 10 years old, and he came forward with a piece of paper in his hand. And he said, Mr. Mackey, could I have your autograph? I was off to one side, because I'm gonna give Steve a ride home. Mm -hmm. And Steve gets down, he puts one hand on each of that little guy's shoulders, he gets down, looks him in the eye, he says, buddy, I'll sign that paper, but I'd like to ask you a question first. If there was one thing I want you to remember from tonight's meeting more than anything else, what do you think it is? Mm -hmm. And the little guy said, that Jesus wants to be my friend mm -hmm. and he'd be the best friend I could ever mm -hmm. have. Oh, Steve gave that kid a hug, give me a high five, buddy, he says, you got it. And then he looked over at me and you know, smiled and anyway, we finally got out to the car to go home. It was after 11 o'clock at night. Hmm. For Steve, that'd be after one, because he was on Central Time. And I said to him, it's a couple hour drive. So I said, tell you what, that seat reclines, I'll drive, you can sleep, and tomorrow we'll get caught up on stuff and talk before we take you to the airport. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget what he said next. He looked at me and he said, sleep? Are you kidding me, man, sleep? There is no way I am going to sleep. He said, that was the greatest rush I've ever had. <laughs> now think about that. This guy was in the World Heavyweight Kickboxing Stadium in Tokyo. This is the greatest rush. Yeah. This is the greatest wow. rush I have ever had. Wow. 
He said, I'm telling you what, did you see that little guy, Lee? He said, did you see that little guy that came up afterwards? I said, yeah. He said, Lee, he got it. He got it. He says, when you tell people what a friend you have in Jesus and that they can be friends with him too, ooh, he said, it doesn't get any better than that. He said, you get paid to do this as a pastor? Whoa. And then he said these words. He said, this could be addicting. <laughs> wow. That's what he said. Yeah. This could be addicting. So he was talking about serving, yeah. about sharing. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, why, why would anyone not do that? Right? I well, mean, I, when, you, when you have that experience, mm -hmm. you have to tell someone. Right. You, you just, you just got to get it out. Right? Yeah, you remember the, the, the man that Jesus raised his daughter from the dead? Right. And then he says, now don't tell anybody about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you know? The guy goes, not? what? what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> don't tell anybody. I got to tell somebody. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like taking, you know, your, your thumb and putting a, over the edge of a, or the end of, of your Coke bottle or your root beer and you just shake it up. Yeah, I it's mean, carbonated. It's going it's, it's to explode. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I guess that's the result of the first two legs. Absolutely. Of the stool. Yes. Mm -hmm. As you keep hanging out with Jesus and yeah. he keeps interacting in your life, yeah. you begin to just really like this guy, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you can't keep quiet about him. Yeah. And then here's the cool part. As you tell other people how cool he is yes. and you see them start to catch on that maybe he'd be cool for them too. Right then you get excited because you see they're getting it. You yeah, know? Exactly. And, and, and so then the, then the enthusiasm grows for you. Yes. It gets even better, which yeah. is why I think that God gave the, um, at the end of every gospel, yes. there's a commission to go to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Jesus doesn't need our help because he could finish it with angels, he could finish it with dreams, he could finish mm -hmm. it with the rocks could cry out. You remember mm -hmm. all that stuff? Yes. So he doesn't need our help. So why would he give us four gospel commissions, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Go to work, go to work, go to work, go to work, you know? Yeah. And it's because he wants us to have the joy, the joy. of yeah. our Lord. Yeah. He says, why should we hoard it, angels? Yes. Let's let them in on this thing. Yeah, yeah. Let's let them taste it. So mm -hmm. this morning, um, we were here, here at, in Nova Scotia, Pugwash, Nova Scotia, and uh, a man came up to me, his name is Bob, and he, he introduced himself to me, and, he, and I asked him, what do you do, Bob? And he said, well, all my life I've been a fisherman. And uh, he said, but, and that, that brought me great joy. He's got two daughters and a wonderful wife, and he says he's found joy in that. But the greatest joy, he said, that I've ever experienced is sharing my faith with others. And he says, I just can't get enough of it. As I uh -huh. share it, it's, he says, it just, it's greater than anything. So, yes, I was a fisherman all my life, but God has now made me a fisher of men. Yeah. And he says he enjoys doing that. He really enjoys it. So much so that he says this coming weekend, he has an opportunity to actually go into the tank and baptize someone. And he says this is, this is so exciting for him. He doesn't want to mess it up. And so he's looking forward to it. So, so the joy that God gives to us in the very um, act of blessing others, yeah. it reacts in blessing upon ourselves. Exactly. So mm -hmm. who, who is really getting blessed by yeah. this? And why would you rob yourself of that opportunity? Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. You're making me think of Luke 6. Give and you will receive. This is verse 38. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So when we witness of our faith to others, I mean, this is a tremendous blessing for us, yeah. and um, and God wants us to experience that. I guess the most exciting thing for me is those first two legs of the stool, you know, the prayer and the Bible study. And when you really do that and really seek that close connection with God and spend time with Him and make Him your best friend, then those two things, will, you'll be so excited and so full that, it, that the product will be that you just have to share. Yeah. You have to get yeah. out there. You yeah. just can't wait to tell people exactly. yeah. about Jesus. Yeah. Right? So those two, like the third one is dependent on those two, if we can mm -hmm. grow on those first two. Yeah. And then we just, we just can't wait to tell people about Jesus and what he's done for us, right? It so. would be a tragedy to try and get people to witness yes. who don't have the first two mm -hmm. going on. Absolutely. Because they don't have that joy yeah. of their Lord That's to spill right. over. And That's then right. that kind of witness is not really contagious. No, it no. isn't. Yeah. But the kind you're talking about, Renee, mm -hmm. that's yeah. contagious. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to go further with this discussion. It's, it's just so exciting. Um, but before we do, we're just going to take a little break, and then we'll be right back. 
Friends, we are so thankful that you joined us today. Mm -hmm. If you would like to enhance your relationship with God, we have an offer for you today that will help you to understand the Bible better. Friends, our offer for you today is the Discover Bible Study Guides. In these lessons, you will find the key to help you to understand the Bible, God's Holy Word, much better. Here is the information that you need in order to receive these free Bible study guides. To request today's offer, just log on to www.itiswrittencanada.ca. That's www.itiswrittencanada.ca and select the TV program tab. If you prefer, you may call toll free at 1-888-CALL-IIW. That's 1-888-CALL-IIW. And thank you for your prayer requests and your generous financial support. Welcome back. And we've been looking at the three legs of the stool, um, Bible study for the purpose of connecting with Jesus and prayer for the purpose of communication with him and then sharing. And these are all tangible things that we can do to have a practical Christian, Christian experience, uh, making Christianity real. And uh, Lee's been sharing those with us. So we've been talking about sharing our faith, about witnessing for our faith. And, and you've given a good example with, with uh, Steve Mackey and his experience and how he just felt great joy when he shared his faith. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, let's be more tangible. What was he sharing? What, what was the content of, of what we are to share when we share as Christians? Well, I think that Renee was kind of alluding to that a few moments ago mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. she talked about bubbling over with your own personal testimony mm -hmm. right. and how that's the byproduct of the first two. Mm -hmm. And um, it puts me in mind of Mark chapter 5, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could read that for us. Yeah. Um, Jesus is talking, right, to that, uh, those, those demoniacs, mm -hmm. remember, mm -hmm. that he cast the demons out and the pigs go into the water and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Then they want to keep hanging out with Jesus and he says no. Mm -hmm. no you need. It says, however, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Mm -hmm. So I guess all of us have our own story, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that's the content, that's the important, because I can't share what Mark has experienced, right. mm -hmm. nor what you have experienced, right. Lee, but I can only share what God has given to me, right? And share that. I can't even, because that's my story. Mm -hmm. That is my story. Have you ever so, noticed that sometimes people, their idea of a Bible study is giving somebody a convincing argument about some theological truth in right. Scripture? No, I've mm -hmm. done that. You ever yeah, noticed that? Absolutely. And, and how do people generally respond to that kind of thing? Um, it turns into a nice intellectual discussion. Or a debate. Or a debate, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But when I mean, you're talking what you just described, Renee, mm -hmm. uh, when you share something that's going on in your life that mm -hmm. Jesus has done in your life, mm -hmm. do you ever have people try to argue with that? No. No, no not at all. No. Yeah. So a huge difference in the absolutely. way you receive. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's much more attractive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see this man, he was he was demon possessed. Yeah. And you know, and, and he's uh, he wants to be with Jesus uh, naturally because he just healed him mm -hmm. and he says, Please let me get in the boat with you, yeah. let me go with you. And yeah. Jesus says, No. No. I want you to go and tell your family what I did for you. What mm -hmm. I did for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your yeah. friends yeah. go and tell people. Yeah, yeah. and your friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's that puts me in mind of a of a story of a guy I pastored a church uh, when I first came to that church there was this guy named Larry Claridge mm -hmm. and he came to me at the time he was in his mid to late seventies mm -hmm. almost eighty or so and he said Pastor I want to tell you about a prayer I've started praying he said every morning because I don't know how many more you know weeks or months I have left to live right. at this age yes. so every morning I pray mm -hmm. Lord Jesus when it comes my time to go. Could you just orchestrate it so that I'm in the middle of doing one more thing for you when I die? Wow. <laughs> oh, I think that's such a cool prayer, you know? And, uh, and he meant it. Yeah. It wasn't just words. No. Larry was like nonstop working for Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And another thing about Larry, 
is that Larry was not what you call an upfront guy. He mm -hmm. was not a charismatic guy. He wasn't a speaker. He wasn't a presenter. He was a behind the scenes guy, kind of shy, but he had major skills in terms of, of handyman skills and stuff. You know, he could make anything out of coat hanger and duct tape. I mean, he, he's just an incredible wow. guy. Um, and he would use those gifts to make differences for people mm -hmm. just because he loved Jesus and he wanted to make a difference for somebody mm -hmm. else. So one day Larry's driving in our little town, Walla Walla, Washington, mm -hmm. and um, he sees a man on a hot summer day in the ditch, I mean in the, in the gutter, trying to climb up onto the sidewalk, and Larry thinks the guy's tripped and fallen, he's hurt. So Larry parks his car, runs up to see if he can help the guy, and the guy's stone drunk. That's why he can't get up, he's fallen down, he's drunk. So Larry says, man, there's no place for you in this hot sun. If you tell me where you live, I'll take you home. Well, the guy happens to be able to be coherent enough to give Larry instructions to get to where he needs to get. It turns out the guy doesn't live in a home. You know these campers that they put in the back of pickup trucks that have like a little hangover thing and then, you know, mm -hmm. the rest in the back? Yeah. This guy's living in a cab over camper without a truck. It's just sitting in the dirt in a vacant lot, has oh. no, no hookups, oh, wow. nothing. Yeah. And he's like basically homeless. Mm -hmm. And Larry gets the guy there helps him up onto the over, overhead bed thing. Mm -hmm. And then he writes on a piece of paper, here's my name, Larry Clary, here's my phone number. If I can ever be of any kind of help to you, anytime, anywhere, don't hesitate mm -hmm. to call. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what time. Mm -hmm. Then Larry tells me, that's the beginning of phone calls. <laughs> I start getting calls and they almost always come late at night after I've been in bed for hours. And they're always a bartender at the other end. And he's saying, I got a guy here who's so drunk he can't walk out of the bar on his own. But he said, if I call you, come and get him. And Larry, who is a long-standing member of our congregation, mm -hmm. wouldn't think twice about people seeing him coming out of a bar late at night. Mm -hmm. He would get up. This is 80-year-old something Larry. Mm -hmm. Gets up, goes down, and gets that guy. Yeah. Takes him to his camper. And Larry told me there were times I took him to his camper, he was so drunk that I was worried if I left him unattended, he might throw up and then aspirate his own vomit and oh, die. Oh. And Larry said, I couldn't, I couldn't bear to think of the guy dying, choking on his own vomit. So he said, many a night, I would sit in the little dinette beside the bed and I would watch him all night and turn his head if he started to throw up so that he wouldn't choke on his vomit. Mm. And one morning, I was still there and the guy wakes up and he says to me, why do you keep coming to my rescue? Mm. Mm -hmm. And Larry said, I said, because somebody keeps coming to my rescue and I'm just trying to pass it forward. Mm -hmm. And the guy says, you need rescue? <laughs> and Larry said, all the time. Mm. And and the guy says, this fellow who rescues you, uh, what's his name? Do I know him? Maybe I know him. Larry says, his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. The guy says, I don't know him. Larry says, would you like to know him? And the guy says, if he's your friend, I'd love to know him. So then Larry says, I meet him every day in a Bible. Have you ever read a Bible? The guy says, I've never even owned one. Mm -hmm. Larry says, if I bought you a Bible, would you like to meet my friend Jesus? The guy says, you bet. So Larry goes and gets a Bible for this guy. And then Larry tells me, now I'm the pastor, Larry tells me, I decided I'm not going to give him a Bible study on theological truths or Bible doctrines. He didn't ask for that. Mm -mm. He asked, how could I meet your friend? I'm just going to open the Gospel of John with a prayer that the Lord Jesus will reveal himself to us and pull us to himself as he promised he would if we lift him up. Yeah. I thought, that's a good way to witness. Mm -hmm. So they're reading the Gospel of John together. No hook in it. That's another thing I think is cool. Yeah. No hook. Sometimes we say, we'll give you some soup if you listen to our sermon. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right. We'll help you out with this if you do this. Here's some literature we'd like you to read, and then we do this for you. You know, no, no, no. No hook involved. Yes. Yeah. And so time goes by. Mm -hmm. And Larry keeps meeting with this guy. And, and so he would meet with him and they would read the Bible together? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Read the Gospel of John together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And time goes by. And then one day the guy says to Larry, do you go to church somewhere? And Larry said, absolutely. I go to the village church just above Walmart. And the guy says, could I go with you? And Larry says, it'd be an honor to take you. Mm -hmm. So then the guy says, well, what should I wear? And Larry said, well, what do you have? He says, well, you know what I have. All I have is blue jeans, a t-shirt, baseball cap, and tennis shoes. 
And Larry said, perfect. Now, I just need to interject right here that the village church that Larry was referring to is a congregation of about 1,800 people who are very into looking good because they're on television every weekend. Mm -hmm. The broadcast has gone out and all around the place. And, and they actually have people who um, tell other people if they're not dressed right that they need to go change. Now, I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm saying when I was pastor of that church, I tried to change that paradigm, you know, mm -hmm. and get him to say, hey, anybody's welcome here. Yeah. But anyway, I just need to make sure you understand that at the time that this guy said what he said, that wasn't the way it was at Village mm -hmm. Church. Mm -hmm. So Larry, the guy says, that's all I have. Larry says, perfect. I'll come and get you next weekend. And Larry Claridge went to pick that guy up wearing blue jeans, a t-shirt, a baseball cap, wow. and tennis shoes. <laughs> they come in and sit on a third row from the front. Keeps his hat on in church the whole <laughs> bit, you know? Wow. And he didn't turn around and say to people, I'm just leading this guy to the Lord, so cut us some slack and don't give us trouble about our clothes, you know? He didn't say that. He just sat there with that guy, and then Larry started crying. Mm -hmm. He's telling me the story. He starts crying, he goes, Pastor, I got to stand at the top of the stairs of the baptistry and watch this guy come out of the water when he gave his heart to the wow. Lord Jesus Christ in, in baptism. And then Larry said to me, it doesn't get any better than that. That's right, that's right. Wow. There it is again, yeah. the joy. The joy of, the of your life. Wow. Yeah. And what was he telling him? About my friend Jesus, that's it. who rescues me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So God pours it in and we just drink it in and he stirs it up. And, then and, we spill it and we spill it over. We just got to tell someone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing story. A, 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 a relative of, of Larry Claridge, we actually taught him. He was, oh, she, yeah. she was one of our students. Her, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was one of our students. Well, yeah. that's a small world. Yeah, it is a small mm -hmm. world. Oh, yeah. Wow. And she was, she was on, on fire for the Lord as well. Huh. She was just a wonderful student. Oh. And she was also quiet. Yeah. Like her green yeah, like, lady. You know, yeah. She wasn't outgoing or anything. No, you know, when you said stir just a moment ago, you said he pours it in and he stirs it up. Yeah. He's not real careful with his stirring and it slops over, <laughs> you know? And, and then as it slops over, the cool thing is it makes room yes. for more for of more. him, yeah. more of the water of life. Yeah. And this is a key because it keeps us from growing stagnant. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. See, mm -hmm. trying to live the Christian life without spilling over, we grow yeah. stagnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then actually, if you think about that original parable in Matthew 25 we were just yeah. talking about, we don't, we don't just grow stagnant, we, yeah. we die. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he says, take from him what he did have. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you end up with nothing. Thing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you said earlier, yeah. use it or lose it. Or lose it. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's for real. It's for real, mm -hmm. yeah. So our job as Christians is to get involved, to dive in, not wait for the pastor. Sometimes we're kind of like, you know, the Greyhound bus, you yeah. know, the, yeah. the pastor takes control, you know, leave the driving to us, right? Yeah. You just sit back and... Shame and, on us yeah. if we're pastors that do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, need, we need to really let everyone else in on the joy. In on the joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Drive that bus, you know, yourself, and, and you'll get a lot of, a lot of people uh, following uh, along that path. So thank you very much for sharing that with us, Lee. Um, Renee, can you close with a, a, a quick word of prayer yeah. for us? Okay. Dear God and Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you fill us with your love mm -hmm. and the precious relationship that we have with you as friends, a friend that loves us and cares about us. Mm -hmm. And Lord, when we communicate with you and we listen to you and, you and we talk to you and you talk back to us, we just can't help but share your love mm -hmm. and your joy with others. Mm -hmm. And that brings joy to us. That's and we right. thank you so mm -hmm. much that you are our savior mm -hmm. and our friend. I pray this in your precious name. Amen. 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 So friends, thank you for joining us again on It Is Written Canada. And remember the words of Jesus when he said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm.